Dear listeners, good morning and welcome to Comme d'Archi, the podcast that opens the doors to the fascinating world of architecture. For newcomers, let me introduce myself. I'm the spokesperson of Anne-Charlotte Despont, PhD in History of Architecture, published author, head of a communication and development agency based in Paris, France, dedicated to architecture. Let's meet every week to discuss culture and architecture with specialists and learn how to look at projects through a context and diversity lens. Thank you for being with me today, and now it's time for talent. Bienvenue dans Comme d'Archi. Hello, dear listeners. This is Esther on behalf of Anne Charlotte. Today, I will read to you the story of the project of two schools in Noyon, in France, by the Vallée de Martigny architects. The commune of Noyon in the department of Oise has decided to rebuild the two school groups in its city centre. These are the Weisenberger School and the Saint-Exupéry School. These two schools, dating respectively from 1960 and 1965, were built with a pailleron-type metal frame. Despite the rehabilitation work carried out previously, they still represented a safety risk for the students. For this reason, the city decided to rebuild the schools. This vast construction site on an occupied site is also an opportunity for the city council to widen the scope of intervention by proposing a more global urban redevelopment. The construction of new premises for these two school groups should allow for the accommodation, in good conditions, of all the activities of these schools. Their single-storey location is also in line with the inclusive approach by perfectly meeting the new accessibility standards. Urban Implementation Weissenberger School Group The Weissenberger site is characterized by its relationship to public space and the use made of it. On one side, to the west, it is the Boulevard Charmolu with its road character. The east side of the site is quieter. It opens on the Rue de Paris, a commercial artery of Noyon. In this sector, pedestrian movements are more numerous. For reasons of phasing and implementation, linked to the presence of the existing school, the construction of the new nursery and elementary schools is done along the Boulevard Charmolu. This road, which stands traffic, does not constitute an environment conducive to the development of a square, which requires calm and security for the reception of the children. We therefore wish to reverse the project success in order to take better advantage of the proximity to the city centre and the Rue de Paris. The creation of a pedestrian link in the heart of the block allows the project to connect to the existing pedestrian lanes. At the meeting point of all these paths, a square federates new practices in connection with the schools and the city centre. A square has been laid out, allowing parents and children to enjoy a time of exchange or games at the end of the day. Saint-Exupéry School Group On the Saint-Exupéry site, the issues are different. The plot, which is larger, must organise and hold a new public space. This must create the junction between a suburban urbanism made up of pavilions, rue du Mail, and an urbanism of large complexes characteristic of the beau séjour housing estate which adjoins the street of the same name. In this context, the architecture must clearly mark its place in order to qualify and order the public space. We have favoured constructions with simple and continuous forms that accompany the parcel boundaries and organise the different flows on the parcel. Integration in the Neighbourhood Weissenberger School Group Like the urban setting, the immediate environment has influenced the architecture that we wanted for the school group. The wide Boulevard Charmolu is bordered by ten houses, often semi-detached, sometimes isolated. These houses are located in line with the street or slightly set back behind a small garden. We have preserved in our building this domestic scale. In order to avoid the construction of a linear and homogeneous front at the property line, we have segmented the facades on the street. By creating these recesses, we fragment the overall silhouette to draw a succession of volumes more to scale. Treated with sloping roofs, they extend the irregular profile of the boulevard and integrate perfectly into this perspective. The treatment of the recesses takes up the theme of the street garden. These are flower beds planted with shrubs and ground cover that provide a necessary distance from the street. Thus, away from too direct a view, it is possible to open the facades more generously. 
The creation of these gardens also provides the necessary plant presence that perfectly accompanies the landscaping of the side street. Saint-Exupéry School Group The integration of the buildings into the neighborhood was driven by two issues. The first is to maintain the current permeable character of the site, in order not to enclave the Beau housing estate even further. The inhabitants must be able to cross the plot in order to maintain proximity to the city centre. The new school group should not be an obstacle. To do this, we have separated the nursery school and the elementary school into two distinct buildings, separated by an alley. It is a public space, open at all hours, which is also a place of conviviality favourable to the routine of a district's life. The second issue is to create a real square in front of the schools. Contrary to the feasibility study, we did not want it to be too big, but more on the scale of the neighborhood. By a game of sliding, we articulate the buildings of the nursery school and the elementary school so as to contain the square on the corner of the Rue du Merle and the Rue de l'Écorcherie, without it spreading over the whole length of the latter. At the articulation between the two schools, a pedestrian pathway is created to reconnect the square with the upper part of the site. The Faubourg district with a Beau housing estate. Materials Weisenberger School Group The materiality of the project comes from the closed environment and the constructive traditions used on the site. The facades are made of traditional red bricks. They constitute an effective thermal complex in addition to the external insulation. The roofs are in natural slate to match the roofs of the bourgeois residences of the historic center. Saint-Exupéry School Group. The layout of the buildings results in two buildings with simple forms. We wanted the materiality of the project to accompany these refined volumes. As for the Weisenberger site, we use brick as a local material. It is treated in a dry joint to reinforce the idea of a homogeneous surface and to attenuate its calpinage. In order to distinguish the two schools, we treat the kindergarten with a brown brick and the elementary school with a red brick. In the same principle, the roof is covered with terracotta tiles of the same color as the brick walls. Interior spaces In order to be welcoming, we made sure that the common spaces were well lit naturally. On the Weisenberger site, the compactness of the project led us to organize the school plan around a central patio. The circulations that surround it are thus bathed in light. In the Saint-Exupéry school group, the more linear circulations are largely glazed along the courtyard and systematically benefit from a French window at their end. The user-friendliness of the premises also depends on the transparency established between the interior spaces, the courtyard and the schoolyard. From any point of the schools, it is possible to have a global perception of the environment. Through the patios and the courtyard, the vegetation asserts its presence and participates in the general well-being. Finally, the use of wood fibre in the ceiling and wood for the treatment of integrated furniture, niches, benches, lockers, gives the space a healthy and warm atmosphere. It is not a question of wood veneer, but of material treated in its mass. It thus offers all the quarantines of perenniality. Circulation Circulation is an important part of the school's operation. They must offer everyone the possibility to orientate themselves easily by serving each space efficiently. They must also allow for fluid traffic, especially during the school break, when all the students and teachers meet and cross paths in the corridors. Finally, along with the benches and coat hooks, they are one of the main spaces for the children to appropriate. Around their personal tag, children hang up their jackets, put down their school bags and snacks. With this in mind, the corridors have been designed as real living spaces. A generous width of at least 2.60 meters, low seats and the creation of niches are real added values in daily use. At any point of a circulation, a visual escape on the outside is possible, enhancing even more these distribution spaces. They become real places of passage, break, and meeting before and after the effective time of teaching. Courtyards, patios, and outdoor spaces. Weissenberger School Group. Each school has an exterior courtyard as well as an interior courtyard or patio. The courtyards open towards the city centre, towards the public space of the heart of the block.
they are bordered by brick walls and ironworks. This transparency is filtered by the green strips allowing multiple framings on the most beautiful buildings of the city centre. The view of the two towers of the Notre Dame Cathedral is particularly appreciated. The planted spaces have been deliberately removed from the edges of the courtyard in order to protect and perpetuate the vegetation. It does not interfere with the children's playtime. The children of the nursery school can take advantage of an interior courtyard made up of mounds covered with a flexible ground favorable to an infinity of games of somersaults. Elementary school teachers have the opportunity to integrate the discovery of plants and vegetables growing, thanks to the patio composed of a permanent garden of scents and experimental gardens. Saint-Exupéry School Group the organization and orientation of built volumes draw courtyards in the heart of the block nestled between the facades and the vegetation of the limits. The courtyards are large play areas that offer diverse atmospheres, a source of imagination and creativity. A mineral courtyard punctuated with games and floor designs, a green courtyard for quiet moments with benches, an outdoor theater. Thank you for listening. This was Esther for Anne-Charlotte. Let's meet again soon for a new episode in English. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to tune in to our previous content on Instagram at Comdarchi Podcast. If you like it, make sure to promote the podcast by giving it five stars on Apple Podcast and adding a comment or on any of your favorite podcast platforms. And don't forget to subscribe and listen to all of our episodes for free. See you soon, and until then, take care of yourself.